saying is like with when you first meet so someone. So you want to know what but, makes but, what makes a guy desirable ex- immediately after meeting no, them, well, or no. are you asking for a high value man? So for me, like a high value man, I've dated a lot of shitty dudes. Low and, value men. Yeah, low value men. <laughs> I've met who, some of them, I'm sure. Yeah, you have, for sure. <laughs> Low height men, yeah. too. <laughs> Ooh. I mean, if you date a guy that's shorter than absolutely, you? Absolutely. I, I always have until oh. now. So. Do you like that? That's or? absolutely a red flag now. Like, I will never date another short man. Wow. Um, and that has nothing to do with, like... What are the, the f- traits that come with dating a short man? This little is man be- syndrome. <laughs> like, give us yep. some, for instance. Because um, we hear that. Yeah. And and just like always compensating for something. Mm-hmm. So did they drive trucks? I feel like that's no, a stereotype. That's a small dick. That's, <laughs> that's a small dick. Hey, that's thing. my job. Have you seen yeah. his truck out there? <laughs> no, we ain't. <laughs> hey, my, hey, my. He ain't talking about this. John. Yeah, my my ex is like, you don't have a, you know. It's like so. It's because she was saying that, you know, because I drive a big this truck, and so I was much, like, it's not even. This is gonna be so much fun. I was like, I, it's not even like that. I just drive it because I thought the truck I was badass. I just bad love ass, to say you know? that about big trucks because I yeah. think they're compensating for something. But you know, I think there's obviously a purpose to having a big truck. But hey, my job, I need <laughs> it for. So hey. But yeah, for me, a high value man is somebody that has balance and like oh. who can embrace their masculine and feminine sides, um, and like be patient with you and I don't know yeah. like oh, can I can I can I ask you something their masculine and feminine side give me an example of what feminine side they should embrace um just like being emotionally aware and but like how like like you, start crying so, when they're sad or something <laughs> sure <laughs> Or just whatever like you would not respect a man that who kept doing that's that. deeper Come than on. surface level. Yeah. Um, somebody that is attentive to your needs and wants to like make you feel good. Um, like I said, somebody who's patient. Like patience is the biggest thing with me because I'm kind of a pain in the ass. So she's insane. Mm-hmm. I need somebody that can be patient with me while also like balancing me out because I've had relationships that have been so toxic and just like make me fucking crazy so have you ever wore the pants in a relationship i would say i normally wear the pants in a relationship and that's the type of guys you've been dating like not masculine yeah and and you're talking about a guy who embraces femininity maybe I, i feel like you're trying to say you want someone who's more empathetic right empathy is definitely a thing not like a you know, a weak man. Yeah. It's you can right. have empathy and not be feminine. Yeah. Right. Yes. I mean, I don't want like, a, like it doesn't, he doesn't have to be that feminine. Like my boyfriend now is not feminine, but he definitely has like feminine like aspects what? to him. Can you tell me? Um, he's just very <laughs> kind and patient. So cause Hold you're on, kind and on. patient, you're feminine. Um, I mean, I feel like being kind and patient doesn't make you feminine. Yeah. Yeah. That is yeah. not feminine. I, feel, yeah. I will jump in and say that's that. That's not feminine. Yeah, yeah it, I agree. it is just because the way that society is constructed. Um, so men, uh, a masculine man has to be an asshole? No, no, but they generally jump to anger quicker. So mm. that... They don't have their emotions intact. Right. Like, they, they are emotionally reactive. Like, women are emotionally expressive. Men are emotionally reactive, it seems. Like, that's a huge generalization, but what I'm mm -hmm. saying, like, to say back Mm -hmm. up what she's saying, like, men who have spent time, like, working on themselves and sort of learning how to, like, feel their emotions as they're happening and not suppress them and man up. Somebody that you don't have to take care of. Like, I don't want to be your mom, you know? I'm just saying, like, I I feel like you don't have to be an angry man to be masculine. No. You just have to have emotional intelligence. Absolutely. To be really masculine. Yeah. So, yeah. Just because a man starts acting angry because of something doesn't make him masculine. In fact, I think that makes them weak. You know, they, you have to have emotional intelligence. You have to be calm, you know, and yeah, I mean, yeah, and that's handle true. things. You're so, as a man, you're supposed to be able to handle problems. You're not supposed to break under okay, pressure. Okay, but well, handling okay. a problem and handling it while using emotional intelligence is two different things. Because, yeah. I mean, you can suppress something or you can deal with it and, like, there's two different two different ways to that. Okay, I, I guess it, I guess it depends on the degrees of anger. I guess I'm thinking like 
you know how some guys they get angry and they're like throwing stuff and breaking stuff yeah mm-hmm. you can that's be mean. anger in a different way i guess so that's how i was kind of thinking yeah yeah definitely so. and it's okay to be angry but yeah. it's right. that's like um kind of a like a a secondary emotion to something underlying like you felt attacked you felt betrayed you felt whatever like anger is usually something because you felt something deeper so a lot of men stop on the anger and i think i think it takes work and depth from the way society raises men to be aware of that and work through problems with your partner from that perspective 